my friends, it's time to address what everyone's thinking, but no one's willing to come out and say it. I think it's my obligation as someone who is a huge, mega fan of cricket. Truly, cricket has changed my entire life. But it's also my obligation to represent you, the average cricket crafter, to hold cricket to higher standards, and to talk about real-world conundrums and things going on in the cricket atmosphere and the cricket world and that most creators aren't willing to talk about, right? Whether they're afraid to have less affiliate commission, whether they're paid by cricket, what have you. I truly think there's stuff going on with cricket that we need to talk about and we just need to address the elephant in the room that I know is happening every single day here in our Makers Learn offices and happening and affecting our members, right? We really want to you know, support Cricket for all the amazing innovation they do, but I also think there's a time and a place where we need to speak up to hold Cricket to higher standards for the greater good of the craft community. In 2017, I dedicated pretty much my entire career to mastering Cricket and being an educator. And let me tell you, I've used the software almost every day since. Whether it's myself or my team, we are constantly in Cricut Design Space. And one thing I can tell you is in 2017, the software was very close to flawless. There was very far and few in-betweens that I would have any issues with the software whatsoever. There were never really any flaws, and you could tell that Cricut was really holding their game strong when it came to managing the software and making sure that everything that is all the features, all the functionality is really solid. Every single day, I would be more so shocked if something was not working, rather as where we are today, it's more like if something's not going wrong, we're all confused why something's not broken. And my friends, that's not what I think Cricket's about. That's not what I think Cricket at its core should be. And whether it be small little tweaks, and we'll talk about them, small little things that we have to have workarounds or things that we just have to wait 20 minutes to relaunch Cricket, I don't think that's the standard. I don't think that's what Cricket ever sought out to do. And I think it's really frustrating for us as Cricket fans to see them dumping probably millions of dollars in building out new machines like the Cricut Venture instead of going through and really dedicating and putting more money into the software, especially when you can only use Cricut Design Space to cut. It's not like there's third-party softwares. Like if Cricut Design Space is not functioning at its highest level, that's it, right? No matter how great of a machine they have, no matter how great of material you have, it all stops when the software stops. So if you are struggling to use different functionalities, and again, we're going to dive into specific things that we have been witnessing day in and day out happening um, to design space on a daily level, because again, me and my team use it every single day. If these functionalities are not working at the highest caliber, then you can't use your machine. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Like the software is only as good, cut that out. The machine is only as good as the software. That's why I support Cricut. That's why I believe in Cricut to my core that it's the best die cutting machine on the market. But I think right now we have to hold Cricut to a higher standard. And over the past three, six months, I have never been this disappointed with Cricut when it comes to their software. So again, I have been dedicated to using the Cricut every single day since 2017. And for a long time, many, many years, it has been super faithful to us and honestly would be able to defend it almost to my core, right? I use it every day. I know the software in and out. But as we transitioned and Cricut grew, I mean, the space, I used to love to take my mammal to Walmart and she didn't really understand what I did, but she knew that I worked online. She knew that I helped people and that I somehow taught crafts in that mist. What I loved to be able to do was take her through the Cricut aisles at Walmart. She believed that if you can't get it at Walmart, 
that you didn't need it. That's my Southern mammal, y'all. So as Cricut grew, Cricut's you know, presence in retail grew, as their user base grew to multi-millions to almost 10 million people have a plugged in Cricut right now. I think there's 6 million active machines, which is crazy to me right now, which is so cool. But I love taking her down the aisle and what used to be a little shelf cap became, you know, a half of the aisle to a full aisle. And now it's like two aisles, like it's so cool. But that really helps represent the growth and the expansion of Cricut. Now we all know throughout COVID that people who had never thought about crafting got into crafting and just because people had more time. But one thing to note here in the Cricut journey is that Cricut went public in 2021. Early 2021, I think the it, atmosphere shifted for Cricut, right? They went from trying to prepare to be going public to keeping everything super, super, super solid as a company and really just serving their members to now since going public, they have more people that are holding them accountable but not holding them accountable in the way we are. Not holding them accountable in the way of having amazing products, having amazing uh, software capabilities, but the financial ways, right? Making sure that the money's coming in, that the profit looks good. And that I think is a really interesting thing for the Cricut journey, because I don't think Cricut, probably at a corporate level, is really, really focused on some of the minor, but actually pretty serious design space issues that we have just grew accustomed to workarounds. And honestly, if Cricut, you know, had a better, easier software experience, that you probably wouldn't feel as confused and frustrated to need as many YouTube tutorials or training courses or anything like that. So on one half, you know, I think it's really interesting for someone like myself to speak up on this topic because we make money teaching people how to use their Cricut, right? So the more confusing the software is, the more you need someone like me, but also I truly love the machine. I love this product. It has truly changed my life. And I know you're probably experiencing this and I just don't want you to feel alone in your Cricut journey. Now you may be watching this video and you're like, well, should I buy a Cricut? I still think yes. I have, I own, I have tested and tried every other machine on the market. And truth be told, unless you have a graphic design degree, unless you have amazing knowledge of Illustrator and understanding of layers, and honestly, things that I never have any interest in learning and perfecting, I know basic level of, but I'm not an expert by any means. and I don't want to be. I think Cricut is still the best machine. I think where we're at right now, is not where we're always going to be. I think there's so much room for improvement and I think Cricut is going to still be the leader in die cutting. So if you're watching the video and you're like, should I even buy a Cricut? Y'all, I still stand behind this machine, but I still think for the avid crafter who's crafting every day, every week, every month, you've probably experienced some of the things we're gonna share in this video. And I wanna make sure that you don't feel alone. I wanna make sure that you are aware that it's not just happening to you that it's happening to even some of the best Cricut crafters in the world. But for the most part, I think it's so weird for a creator to speak up on this topic because some creators could probably feel like it's going to hurt themselves in the long run. But the way I feel is that when things like this are happening, that we have to speak up about it because this is the beauty of our company. We work for you. We work for our members. We don't work for Cricut. We don't work for any other brand. We work for you as the creator and the maker yourself, because when you support Makers Gonna Learn, that is how we get to work and just show it for you every single day. So let's dive into some of the issues that we've been aware of with Cricut and that we want to see, you know, hopefully some really good improvement over the next few months to a year. In one of our courses, Maker University, we designed a pretty advanced level project one that we totally knew should have been able to be supported in design space. But after we took it to the mass market, after we published the course and people started recreating these projects, we found that people weren't actually able to upload the files. The file was very um, comprehensive and very detailed that Cricut 
was having trouble for probably over 70% of the people to actually get the file uploaded and to be able to use it. I think there's still room for improvement with Cricut on the upload capabilities. Very similar, when you upload certain size photos to Design Space, they pretty much, a lot of times, if they're too high of quality, they're not gonna upload at all. They're just gonna spend time spinning and spinning and spinning instead of saying flat out, hey, you need to go a little bit smaller. Or especially with SVGs, you shouldn't have that problem. You know, if the software is as great as it's supposed to be, you shouldn't have issues when you're uploading a very complex image just because there's a couple extra layers, right? An SVG overall is an SVG. It's a scalable vector graphic, right? Whether you're gonna size it really small or you're gonna size it really large, that shouldn't really be a deciding factor on if you are, should be able to upload the image and then work with it. I think it's just another sign that Design Space would glitch out and cause you to again think that this is only an issue that you're having when in reality, it's across the board. It's happening to many of us over and over again. Now, traditionally, when a design software has an update, you would think of this as a really positive thing, right? They're putting a lot of time and energy effort into making the software better, to seeing improvements, right? But what we have found and what we are really intrigued by is the days leading up to most updates, and we don't know when a Cricut update's really coming until it's here, but this past update, when days leading up to it, not only were we having glitches, some of the most random, absurd glitches happening, it was affecting our members too. If you ever tune into a Makers Learn live show, you'll see we are live crafting with you. We're showing you what it's really like to use Cricut. And do you know how embarrassing it is for myself and my team to be on a live show and the software to glitch out for the software to stop working? That's part of the reason why I wanted to film this video to address that you're not alone. There's so many people when this happens to us on a live show, they're like, oh my gosh, this is happening to me too, thank you. Like, I am so glad I'm not you know, doing this alone. And I think it's really interesting in the days leading up to most updates that random things on the software start going rogue. They stop working, they glitch out, images will move, images will disappear like it's very odd and very strange to me because my friend i have been using this software for many many years and here's the thing that stuff never used to happen i don't know if crickets grew to a certain size where this is now the status quo but i sure hope it's not like i really hope that this is a season that we will soon forget about because they're gonna come back and really whether it's invest in more engineers, just put more focus of the company time. I think one thing people think is Cricket's a very large corporation, but I would argue it's not. Like if you really look at their organizational chart and the team, it's a pretty small but mighty team. So I think possibly they just need to rededicate themselves to really having amazing quality software and just really focus in on that over the next couple months, again, to a year, to just improve these small things that seem to fall through the cracks, whether it's for company profit or to launch new products. I don't know. I'm just an outsider sharing with you my experience. Another thing I think is really fascinating is that if you wanna compare Cricut to Canva, which I think is a true comparison, you can upload a font or download a font rather for Makers Gonna Learn, and that font will instantly pop up in Canva. Y'all, we're still having to manually reload and relaunch Design Space. It's 2024. If other softwares can do this, and I think Canva is the perfect one to compare it to because they're both online, they're both software, and one is web-based and one, you know, Cricut Design Space is web-based, but it has its own app. I think there's room for innovation and improvement, and this would really help Cricut crafters, especially beginner Cricut crafters, because they have to then go watch YouTube videos 
to learn, oh, I have to relaunch it, or you know, you have to take her 30 days to master your Cricut challenge to understand, oh, I have to do this before I can find the font. Instead of downloading the font, putting it on your computer, and then trying to find it, and you're like, I can't do this. I'm not gonna be able to make a Cricut project, right? I think it's little things like this where we have gotten accustomed to workarounds, but possibly not even need it. We just need to nip it in the bud with a real innovation. On the topic of new updates from Cricut that meanwhile should be in beta, right? They're always putting updates in beta first, so you can self opt in to participating in beta. Amazing if you do, thank you. Um, we love to use beta sometimes, but I'm not even talking about beta. I'm talking about a real life Cricut update, all right? There will be issues like my mat will randomly automatically select a 12 by 24 inch mat instead of a 12 by 12 inch mat and things like that that just shouldn't be happening and they won't fix themselves for like multiple, multiple days. And in my opinion, what that's telling me is that people aren't giving enough dedication and focus into making these updates fine tune. We went through a very large revamp of the Makers Can Learn website in the year 2022. And y'all, it was brutal. The amount of time, energy, effort we had to put in to this website update, right? We redesigned the entire website, everything. I get it. It takes a lot of work. But what I also get is Cricut has a lot of amazing true fans and that I believe they should have the capacity and the ability to make this be a one-off thing that happens instead of what it's become is something that happens every update. It's not if it's go happen again, it's, oh, we have an update, what's not working this time, right? That's just not the status quo. I don't want that to be Cricket's reputation and I hope you don't want it to be either. And I really hope you don't think this video is negative because like I said, I love Cricket. Like I love what they do, I love the machines and I really want to love the software more. Not that I don't love it, but I think there's room to love it more. I think there's room for improvement and I think it's just so important to have these conversations. So I wanna know in the comments down below, let me know how your experience been with Design Space. Have you noticed this happening? Am I crazy? Is it only happening to us? I really want you to chime in. I really hope that Cricut sees this video, takes it not as just a negative video. It's coming from someone that has literally done work with Cricut, has loved Cricut, has spent thousands and thousands of dollars of my own money purchasing machines, testing, creating content for them, and being a true advocate for the brand. I love Cricut. Don't let anyone ever get it wrong. But I also want to help cultivate a relationship with my audience that is one that you know I'm gonna come to you and be real and be honest, and that's what it's all about. So I wanna hear from you guys in the comments down below. Tell me your experience. Tell me if there's anything that I missed that you hope to see Cricut improve on, right? I think we're all, you know, it's hard for us sometimes as outsiders just looking at a large corporation and wonder why are they not prioritizing this, but they're coming out with this, right? Like that's where I think it gets frustrating for a lot of us as Cricut users. I know myself personally with the Venture update um, is definitely one like, who really can use this? You know, I said with the Venture update, like, we have a very large office, we're very blessed, and I could barely find space for it in this large office. Like, who's really gonna be able to use it at their home, right? Like, there's nowhere in my house, maybe my garage, that it would live. But again, who would wanna put a $1,300 piece of technology in their garage, right? Like, it just makes me question what's going on. So again, I wanna hear from you down below. If you're brand new here, my name's Tanner. I founded a craft membership called Makers Gonna Learn in 2017, and I have this YouTube channel where I teach people how to master their Cricut every single day. Me and my team work very hard to help makers just like you have a great experience with your Cricut, even when the software has been a little unreliable, which I think we all can agree it has. So I am so excited to see where Cricut goes. I can't wait to hear your input and I can't wait to see you in another amazing Cricut video. Bye guys.